Welcome to Studio Lajo Cree. This is Larry Krieg's Rail Video 36, Hokkaido Railroading Part 1, Tokyo to the Seikan Tunnel. Hokkaido is the northernmost of Japan's four large islands. Hokkaido is different from the rest of Japan in many ways. In fact, it has a lot in common with Michigan, where I live. Here's a quick side-by-side -side comparison. For starters, both are pretty well surrounded by water. Then there's latitude. Hokkaido's southern end is at 41 degrees 21 minutes south. Michigan's is at 41 degrees 43 minutes. Hokkaido's northern tip is 45 degrees 30 minutes north. Michigan's lower peninsula at the Straits lies at 41 degrees 47 minutes. Hokkaido's capital, Sapporo, sits on the 43rd parallel, as does Grand Rapids. Both cities enjoy considerable snow. Typically, Sapporo gets 197 inches, Grand Rapids 73 annually. Michigan, including the Upper Peninsula, is about four times bigger than Hokkaido. And what about the people? Hokkaido's population is just over half that of Michigan. How close together people live? It's almost identical. In the average square kilometer, 67 people in Hokkaido, 68 in Michigan. The red and yellow areas of this map show where most people live. In flat Michigan, cities are clustered in the south. In mountainous Hokkaido, most people live in the valleys. So let's go there. First the flight, often over Alaska. My first flight over was lucky, clear with a great view of snowy Denali, Mount McKinley. Most flights land at Tokyo's Narita Airport, about 30 miles northeast of the city. After making our way through the usual international airport confusion, we find our way to the Japan Rail JR ticket counter to validate our Japan Rail Pass and reserve our seats on Narita Express. This sleek train set will take us to Tokyo's main station, where we can change to the Shinkansen bullet train going to Hokkaido. JR East's Tohoku high-speed line will take us through northeastern Japan to the Seikan Tunnel. The trains serving this route are designated E5, 43 sets built beginning around 2011, designed for a top speed of 200 mph with a capacity of 731 passengers. We head northwest through the city. Here's the scene as we leave the Tokyo suburbs and head north. We're passing through Fukushima Prefecture now. After an hour and a half, our train glides into Sendai Station, roughly halfway to the big tunnel. Surprise! We've got a red train set hanging onto our tail. This is an E6, designed for service over high-speed and conventional track to the west coast city of Akita. Two trains are coupled together to efficiently use the high-demand track near Tokyo. On the move again, we zip through Miyagi and Iwate prefectures Actually, about a third of the route is in tunnels that punch through the rolling hills. Track speed north of Sendai is 200 miles per hour most of the way.
Morioka, two hours, 21 minutes from Tokyo, is where the Akita Shinkansen, the red E6, tagging along with our train, cuts off and heads west. Here's how a normal Shinkansen departure is handled. Watch the military precision of the platform master and conductor leaning out his window. Someone at the far end has crossed the yellow line. Platform master gets on the PA to ask them to stand back. He cannot allow the train to move until everyone is completely clear. As the E2 consist picks up speed, conductor and platform master bow. Both remain fully attentive until the rear unit passes the end of the station platform. This is standard procedure for all trains at all stations throughout Japan. After another 45 minutes, we reach Imambetsu, the last stop in Honshu, and the point at which the JR East train crew hands the baton to the JR Hokkaido team. Very soon the train will enter the 33-mile-long Seikan Tunnel. Here we're approaching the tunnel from the north on a conventional train. We're passing the Northern Tunnel Maintenance Facility. We'll pause here and take a closer look at this remarkable tunnel. I'm proud to say I've been through the Seikan 13 times. Construction on the tunnel began in 1964, reaching a depth of 787 feet below the stormy Tsugaru Straits, making it the deepest railway tunnel in the world. But it cost the lives of 34 workers and $6.4 billion by the time it opened 24 years later in 1988. It's actually a system of tunnels with a strong focus on safety. Shortly before the design work began, a horrendous train fire in another long Japanese tunnel had taken a tragic toll of lives. The tunnel system includes escape tunnels, sprinkler system, exhaust tunnels, and a trench between the two tracks where specially built emergency vehicles can run quickly in to respond to any accident. Shinkansen service began in 2016 after trackage was dual gauged. About 50 daily freight trains on 3 foot 6 inch track share the tunnel with 30 high speed trains on 5 foot 8 and a half inch track. Sharing the tunnel hasn't been easy. Most of the freight travels in containers on flat cars, so there's a very real possibility of the pressure wave from a high-speed train blowing containers off and wreaking havoc. The HSTs are capable of over 200 mph, but must slow to 87 in the tunnel to play nicely with the freights. Thanks to a tour in 2008 arranged by Trains Unlimited Tours, I was able to see and hear about behind-the-scenes facilities. Before Shinkansen service began, a few trains were scheduled to stop at Tappikaite Underseas Station for workers and tour groups. Shinkansen don't stop because of the heavy traffic in the tunnel. As you see, the parallel service tunnels are bright and decorated with art. Tunnel workmen ride their bikes to work. We pass workmen readying equipment for maintenance projects. Escape tunnels are segmented with heavy airlock doors in case of flooding. Okay. 
If you're stuck in the middle of a tunnel, you don't have to walk 17 miles to get out. There's a cable car about a third of the way from each end to bring you to a facility near the shore. Our tour group boards and up we go. At the top, maintenance for the cable car. Tunnel workers were nicknamed moles, so in typical Japanese fashion, cute cartoon moles became the tunnel mascots. Near the surface, an informative display illustrates the tunnel's curves and slopes with a lighted transparent tube. On the surface, a meeting seminar room with a view over the Tsugaru Strait, calm today. Back in the main tunnel, our train approaches. On the Hokkaido side, the old line winds along the coast much of the way to Hakodate. The Shinkansen runs direct through many mountain tunnels and doesn't go into Hakodate. This twilight footage from 2008 shows what you miss on the Shinkansen. Eight years later, one of the first Shinkansen arrives in Shin Hakodate Hokuto Station. This is the end of the line for now. In another decade or so, the line will reach its planned northern terminus, Sapporo, the capital of Hokkaido. These folks are clearly thrilled to have a Shinkansen come to their island. JR East and JR Hokkaido jointly own the fleet that serves the Northern Island. Like all Japan's high-speed trains, they are EMUs with most or all axles powered, including the two super long nose control cabs. There are 10 coaches with three 400 horsepower motors each. The conductor is walking to the end of the train. He'll check to make sure that what's now the front cab is configured to be in the rear. The train set heads back to Tokyo in about 15 minutes. Note the confirming hand signal as the headlights become tail lights. Watch the intense concentration of the young engineer as he completes the shutdown procedure. About 15 miles south is the center of Hakodate. It's a modern city that loves its history, including its quaint but busy trams. We'll have to leave them for another time.
Thank you for watching Larry Krieg's Rail Video 36, Hokkaido Railroading Part 1, Tokyo to the Seikan Tunnel. Next in this series, Part 2 takes us from Hakodate to Sapporo.